Hey, everybody. Welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm Jordan Edwards in New York. In Los Angeles, we got Demi Ramos. What's up, Demi? What's up, Jordan? Ah, not much, not much. It's their second to last show of the year. Next week, we're closing it out with Joss Stone. But today, I'm very excited for one of my favorite singers. Her new single, God Must Hate Me, is out now. Please welcome Katie Turner. Katie, what's Hello. going on? Hi, guys. It's so nice to be here. We so got nice it. to see your smiling face and the famous red hair. So uh, you are, uh, you said you're, you're coming to us from Nashville today. Yes. Yes. And Airbnb. Um, just and woke Airbnb. up. How is it? Are, are, are there, are there proper, um, you know, coffee and towels and, and bed sheets like you want? In a, are you, are you going to rate the Airbnb highly? I, yes, I think um, I just started getting into coffee. So that's really never been like my criteria, but this place does have a Keurig. I'm looking at it right now. It has one of those towers of K cups. So I have a lot oh, of, wow. a lot of option. I highly recommend. That's what you, you need. Is, that's coffee. what you need is coffee. Yeah. Yeah. We need I, to talk about this. So you just got into coffee. Yeah. I used to be one of those like purists that would pride myself on how I didn't need coffee. And I viewed myself as better than everyone who drank coffee. Cause I was like, I'm just so energetic naturally. And <laughs> you all suck. And then I, you all I, suck. Realized, I realized like I was missing out. Like the reason so many people drink coffee is because it's so good. It's yeah. amazing. And that what that was part of your uh, American Idol audition, or your, your second one, was that you they you told them you didn't drink coffee, you know? Yeah, so no, they, it was my you... whole brand. It was my whole brand. Like I'm just yeah. so like, well, I didn't know at the time. Unbeknownst to me, it was actually undiagnosed ADHD. So maybe that really got me my fucking kick. Uh, <laughs> but now, yeah, because I was like, blah, blah, and I was like, oh my god, why am I so like all over the place? And it's like, well. <laughs> Maybe yeah. this thing. Um, and now it's also, I realized the act of getting a coffee that I love so much. Like I feel complete. Like people go to the gym to feel better. People write or journal. No, I go and get like an iced coffee and I feel so much better about myself. Yeah. And you know, you, you've been on tour. One, one thing is uh, that we've heard from artists is that it's fun to go to like local coffee shops, whatever city you're in. So that's another thing you have to look forward to. Yeah. It's like romanticizing your life. And like my room could be like disgusting. There can be crumbs everywhere. Like I'm literally sleeping on the mattress pad, no top sheet. But once I get an iced coffee or I go to a local coffee shop, I feel so much better about myself. I'm like, I, I was so productive. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. yeah and yeah. what is, what do you, what do you order when you go? Is it just iced coffee, just plain half and half sugar? It's, I'm vegan. So it's, uh, it's oat milk. Yes. That's right. That's right. And like sugar free vanilla syrup or like a, a sugar free syrup or something. Um, when I should just probably just get stevia or something. I don't know. I don't really know how to take coffee. I'm learning. I'm learning everything. <laughs> Well, uh, we'll uh, this has been Coffee Talk with Katie, Demi, and Jordan. Next episode, uh, catch us, catch us each week. So, uh, Katie, you have this uh, new single out. It's been out under a month, and it already has close to 7 million streams and all sorts of YouTube views. And I checked last night. You have both YouTube covers and um, slowed down, extra sad anime versions of the song are out now. But that's so, how I knew I made it. That's how I knew I made it when they slowed reverbed my song. And yes, absolutely. Oh, and like no. the, you got like the 80s anime visualizer with like the guy on the train looking sad, you know, so. I love it. I'm so excited. That's a, That was truly like my, val that was all the validation I needed. Like it really wasn't crazy amount of streams and I'm so grateful, but it was like that. I'm like, once I get the sad anime, I'm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Are you into anime? Are you like an anime person? Um, I like, I dabble in a lot of things. So I know enough about it to get by on knowledge. But um, no, I don't really watch it. But I realize I don't really watch anything. I watch YouTube documentaries about shit I don't need to know, like the Disney Fast Pass <laughs> system. And it was like a three hour fucking documentary. But I well, you're a huge Disney person, right? Yes. 
unfortunately. Yes. What is what is your favorite classic Disney animated film? Like pre like pre two thousand. Oh, pre two thousand because that's that's too easy because the Renaissance was in the nineties, so technically anything can count. Um, uh, Hercules. Herc oh wow, wow that card. was a good one. That's a good wild one. card. I feel like I watch that and I just like every time I watch I'm like this holds up like this is so good but then classic classic would be like Peter Pan yeah I love Peter Pan I love Alice in Wonderland I love any of the like because those two movies the anim the the characters are so surreal and kind of trippy and there's lots of color I'm totally with you on that love I like Peter Pan like he he was my first person I ever like swooned over so <laughs> Even when I meet the at Disney World or something, like I know it's like okay, Katie. Like realistically, they're an underpaid college-like student, like just working at Disney. But I'm just like, no, that's Peter Pan, and I get so nervous, and I'm like, oh, probably breathe. <laughs> well, if well, you could like, be if any character from a Disney movie, which one? If you could say they're doing a remake of a Disney movie, which one would you want to be? Which character would you want to be casted as in a remake of a Disney movie? Here's my problem. Whenever these questions happen, I get to, I don't know how I'm a dreamer, but also a realist because when, when those questions are asked, like I immediately go in my head while I'm like, okay, well shit, I probably couldn't play a lead. So I have to start thinking, but no, for this little question, mermaid, I'll play a lead. I'll play a lead for, for this question. Yeah. It's a fantasy I, question. So I would play, um, the too hard. No. Um, if they remade, if they remade that movie Enchanted with Amy Adams, I would be a younger her. Okay. Wow, that's a good one. That's yeah. Good one. So yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. You kind of made like a realistic cast casting choice. So. Yeah, I see. Like even when being like, okay, I can be whoever I want, I still was like, I got to be realistic. Yeah. Just if he's watching. You know, let's let's get into the music a little bit. Uh, um, first of all, we saw you on your show. I saw your show at uh, at uh, in New York here at Bowery Ballroom uh, last month. I guess it was opening for Fosia. Um, I, I was I was in the crowd. Uh, your your set was amazing. You had the audience eating out of your hand. You like you played both new and old songs. Um, so first of all, I got to say, what was it like touring with Fozia? What's it like touring with Fozia? Because yeah. she's such a presence. There's like, it feels like some kind of ethereal being when she's on stage with the whole costume and everything. So what's that like? Well, there's a guy with a leaf blower right outside my door. Um, literally right outside my door. <laughs> um, I'm going to run to the bathroom. We're running to the bathroom, running to the bathroom, running to okay. the bathroom. Well, you don't sound too bad, Katie. We can we can, oh. we can can hear you pretty good. Well, now I'm in the crystal house in the bathtub, because why not? We love this. Yeah. We love it. Love it. We get, we, bathroom have, have good acoustics. You got good bathroom yeah. acoustics now. Okay, now Sweet. I'm in the bathroom. Bubble baths. Okay. Um, it was, first of all, the Fosia show. So amazing. I don't think she's real. Um, I actually did come to that. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what Fozia looks like for those who don't know. And that's like a toned down Fozia photo. She makes me mad because it's also one of those people where, you know, when someone's so perfect, but usually it's like, oh, well, they're a bitch. So that's why. Or it's like, oh, well, they're not as good at singing. Like, no, she is the ultimate singer, the ultimate performer. And she's nice. And she's smart. And she's, pr I'm like, fuck. Like, why the fuck am Is I it like too much? You're like, it's too much, Fozzy. You're too much. What? I was actually like, you're actually too good. <laughs> Tone it down. Tone it down. Um, but the New York show is so incredible. And I'm so happy to have played and playing live still feels yeah. weird. It was Amazing. such a good energy. It's such good energy that night. Like the crowd was so responsive to even songs that you hadn't recorded yet. They didn't, didn't even know. Everyone was still very responsive. That's another thing. Uh, Katie, that's a good question right there is um, how do you, what's it like to play, you know, a song that isn't recorded that people don't know yet. You know, what's it like to have to use that as kind of like a test audience? Do you get nervous when you play a song that people don't know yet? Or, or, or are you excited to share something new? 
well, yeah, because if they hate it, then I'm like, what if I already had plans to release it? And then they're not responding well. Then it's like, shit. It's like, if it goes well, it's amazing. But it's like taking a gamble because it's like, okay, if they really react well, perfect. It like validates, like, let's go. I'm really excited. And then sometimes it's like, oh, like if they don't react that well, like, oh, no, like I'm kind of nervous now. What if it doesn't do as well? Um so yeah, it's taking a risk. It's very nerve wracking, but when it does pay off, it feels insane. Yeah. There's one thing about like the night before um, a release that there's a lot of artists who have like their little habits or just their ways to stay calm. I think one of our guests in the show said she would have to sleep over a friend's house because she'd just be so shake, shaked up about like having a release come out at midnight. So is there anything that you do to kind of like hold it together until 12 o'clock and you're like, okay, we're good. Mine is underwhelming. Um, I go to sleep because I, I like, usually I get so tired from being burnt out, from feeling so nervous that I, I sleep. But then I set an alarm for like 11.59 and then I wake no. up. It's out, like half asleep. And then usually I go back to bed like 30 minutes in. But Gone Must Hate Me was different. I stood up until like 2 a.m. like pacing around my room because I was like so excited for that one. But usually with releases, I'm just like, like whatever. And I like fall asleep. Well, God Must Hate Me is blowing up. We talked about the YouTube covers and the slow reverb version. Why do you think that this single specifically has done so well in such a short amount of time? I have no idea. I want to know too. I want to know too. Where were, where was everyone when I released my, just kidding. No, no. But um, I don't know. I, I just know that I'm extremely happy it is. And I'm, I'm so thankful that people have been finding their own experiences in it. And so many different people have been making me find new meanings in the song that I wrote. And I'm just like, wow, like, this is incredible. So yeah, whatever happened and whatever made people like it so much, I'm, I'm very happy. I really wanted to ask you about the cover art and whose idea was it? How much of it is you that made this? And uh, yeah, the story behind the pictures. I made, <laughs> so I made it on Pixar. I made it on the fucking photo. You made it? Yes. Wow. Um, what happened is the song wasn't done and then it went viral on TikTok and it's like, oh shit, we have to get this done now. And usually how it works is you need to upload it like a week before the streaming services. So you need that buffer time. So you can't release a song if you don't have the art. So I'm like, shit, what are we going to do? I don't, <laughs> we don't have enough time to hire someone good. So I'm like, shit, I have these Polaroids. I have a printer scanner and I have stickers and I just <laughs> it, and then I went on a picture and I was like I was like paintbrush stroke and then I was just like adding it but that was all Pixar that's really she's like and I have stickers <laughs> I think it's really cool I really yeah. want to go back though to what everyone what what kind of made you brought you out of your hometown and everything American Idol <gasps> what about it so season 15, right? That happens. How happy are you that you came back for season 16? How hard, how, well, how hard was the decision to come back? Let's put it that way. Okay, well, season 15 was the last season on Fox. So at that point, I thought it was ending. So when I didn't make it, I was like distraught. Uh, and so the time season 16 came around, it wasn't my decision to go back. My mom actually bought a ticket to... They weren't having any auditions, open auditions near me in Philadelphia. It was either a five-hour drive to Pittsburgh was the closest one, or I could take an hour and a half cheap flight to Orlando to go to Disney World to audition. But at that point, I've auditioned for The Voice six times, American Idol two times. For the same season I ended up getting on, I submitted an online audition, and I didn't make it. I didn't even – same song. Um, so wow. I was just – so numb at this point I, and my expectations were like I had none and I pretty much was like fine mom I'll go and then when I don't make it 
I'll go on Space Mountain and I'll just be like, fine, it'll be whatever, it's the summer. Um, so I did not expect even making it on the show at all. Now, in season 15, you did the original song. In season 16, you, uh, what we saw on TV at least, um, you, audi- you auditioned with original songs. What was the decision behind, you know, how hard was it to go with original music versus just a tried and true, you know, vocal belting audition song that, that most people do? Well, I did try the tried and true way first, but luckily they didn't air that one. I went in and my first song was Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. And I, I botched it. I botched it. Katy Perry, I'll never forget this. <laughs> I hit the note. I went, I'm not. Uh, hit me, baby. One more time. However, the end of the song goes. And I missed the note and Katy Perry winces. She goes, and I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck. fuck. <laughs> Perry winces. That's a bad sign. <laughs> and I didn't plan on using my second song. So when they asked for the second song at that point, I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm fucked. So I'm just going to put it back in. Like, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Because what can I lose at this point? Katy Perry's wincing at me. I can't lose anything. <laughs> so it really wasn't nerve wracking at that time because I was so caught up with just getting through. I didn't even have time to think like, what am I doing? Cause at that point I'm like, okay, maybe it's actually better to do my original song cause I can sing it better. Hearing your story about auditioning a few times, trying the voice, um, are you a believer of fate? Are you a believer of things I that's think, meant, to, meant to be? I think this made me a believer in fate definitely because my mom thought it was like this huge prophecy because I was conceived on Disney property. So she's like, the first season, they're back on <laughs> ABC, back on ABC, which is owned by Disney, and you can go to the first open call at Disney World and you can make it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And she thought it was like literally like Mickey Mouse, like was writing in the fucking like stars, like she's gonna make it, but no. Um, don't think that, but I definitely believe in when it's your time, it happens. So I, if anyone uh, knows me in person, knows me from real life or uh, watches, listens to the show, I do have a fascination with seeing competition shows, The Voice, American Idol, America's Got Talent. One thing I'm curious about, Katie, is in between shows, in between performances, what is life like for an idol contestant? Like, what do you do in between shows with yourself with all that time? A is it just auditioning? A whole lot of nothing. It's when, when you look at those shows, 85% of your time will be spent doing nothing. And the rest is like doing something. And then it's like doing nothing and preparing to do that one thing of, cause it's like, you wait, you wake up at 6 a.m. to sit there until like 5 p.m. Like, and you'll have like, maybe you'll be like in a camera or like they'll film you, but the actual singing part, you're maybe doing like 5% of the time. Do you get, how much do you, how much uh, say do you have in what songs, how are the songs chosen? How much does the artist have influence over in terms of the song choice we actually do have a lot of control like i will give american idol that like they're very much like very (laughs) encouraging of you picking what songs you want and if they can clear it you can pretty much sing it hollywood week's different because there's so many people so it's kind of like a challenge thing when uh you get up because the band has to learn the song if they play with you. And at that point, there's like 90 people the band has to play with. So to make it easier on them, you pick from a list of like 15, 16 songs. But then, you know, lines of 10 and everyone everywhere else in the competition, you really do get to pick all your own songs. I'm also really curious, what does it feel like to get so far in that competition? I think you were number seven. At, uh, you It was number seven, right? Yeah. Season. What is it like to be number seven? Lucky number seven. Let's go. Mm-hmm. But I mean, is it more pressure? Is it less pressure as time goes on, as people start getting knocked off? 
Uh, I think it wasn't any pressure until it started airing and mm. your small bubble becomes so public. So when other people's opinions can get through, that's when it started getting more pressure because as people get kicked off, who are your friends, you're having people send you messages like it should have been you, it should have been you. So then you kind of put that pressure on yourself like, oh no, I have, I need to prove why I'm still here. So Jamie and Arkansas realizes like I deserve to be here. Like, no. Mm. Um, so it was a lot of like internal pressure and that comes like, I think when it starts airing, but also I didn't even expect getting that far. So then I think it was a lot of self-inflicted pressure of like, ah, well, every day, every day I'm winging it. So, oh God, like I, I could end up winning this. Oh God. Like, I think that was like a lot of fear. Well, you play seventh and there's a long history of, of artists who didn't win still making it out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for example, one of the earlier, when your label made Atlantic, uh, Briston Maroney didn't make it very far and he's doing very well for himself. Great singer songwriter, just like you. Um, so once Idol was over and you have, okay, now I have the solo career. I have all this exposure. I have more Instagram followers. What was that, you know, six months, year or so after Idol ended like, what was that like to kind of get your solo career together post TV? Very hard. I think I knew nothing about the music industry before I went on American Idol. I was literally just plucked right from high school. Um, and afterwards, I think you had this idea that, okay, now everything's going to be so easy. Labels are going to be knocking down my door. They're going to get a baseball bat and they're going to chase me. Like, oh my God, I, I'm not going to be able to handle this. No, it's like the plague. Being a reality show, singing contestants, like a dirty word. Like, you're like, hey guys. And they're like, oh my God, it's the girl from America. I don't eat. Like, no. Gross. Uh, so it was kind of hard to try and craft an identity outside of that where people could respect me and be like oh no that's she's actually an artist because I feel like when you are on a singing competition it's very much seen as like covers and oh not taken as seriously so it was a lot of like time spent trying to prove myself I feel like it was more pressure after the show than during um and it's a lot of transformation and a lot of hard work um, where exposure gets you to the door, but you're still going to have to do a lot of work to get through it all the way. Well, I Thank think that's why so I think that, so sorry, go ahead, Demi. No, I just wanted to commend you for being so honest and open about what it really feels like to be a contestant after one of these shows. And um, yeah, what, it, what advice do you have for any future contestants of future shows um, who want to have a career after the show? I'd say be proactive, be realistic, realize that I think the thing with American Idol is it all happens so fast, which means your dopamine transmitter, like you're getting so much, you're getting those highs that are so, 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 so high that afterwards when it goes down, it feels even lower and lower. And I'd give the advice to not take it as a reflection of your self-worth. They come back. It will take some time, but use the experience that idol gave you to make connections long-lasting connections release the music you want to release and just craft out who who you want to be as an artist using your tools and just understanding that it may take some time and you may lose followers but all of that comes back and it may suck in the moment but it's just temporary and you'll find your way and see, that's why I think that you doing the original music was such a good career move on your part because you are also auditioning for anyone else out there that you were a songwriter, that you knew how to put together a phrase. And so did you think that was a big advantage for you that you had shown your songwriting talent on TV? I mean, now I can look back and be like, that was, that was a good move. At the moment, I never saw it as a good move or not a good move. I, I was kind of like, yeah, I write songs. It was very casual, but now I can look back and be like, 
oh, I was better off doing an original song and sticking to my guns because un unbeknownst to me at that time, it was a huge, I knew going into it as a huge public platform, but I didn't really understand that people still recognize me for that song three years after doing it. So I didn't really think it would have left that much of an impact. So I'm glad I did it. And your songwriting style, you know, you've mentioned Joni Mitchell as an influence. And to me, some of your music has kind of a musical theater. I can tell you, you've watched musical theater. You've watched the Disney movies and stuff. You're, you're very good with yeah. clever phrases and fitting a lot of syllables into a small amount of space, almost uh, Stephen Sondheim-esque a little bit. So in terms of structuring your songs, where does that influence come from? I feel like no particular influence. I feel like how I structure my songs isn't necessarily directed by or influenced by a certain person, but it's influenced by my stream of consciousness because fitting in a lot of words into a short amount of time, it's like, that's what I'm doing in my head at all hours of the day. <laughs> um, so I guess it's influenced by my own mental mental health. Um, there's just a lot up there. Yeah, there's a lot going on at all times. So I kind of use music to like declutter some of the shit and process. Yeah. Have you ever considered acting? I just had this moment, Jordan, where I was like, she's a comedian. She's funny. Like you should really look into that. And I th honestly, have you ever thought about that? Has anyone ever said that? My mom has, when, because I'm really dramatic. And I mean, I would really sell myself to performances when I was younger <laughs> to get out of like school. Like I would mix up like Lipton iced tea with like uh, peanut butter crackers and shit. And I would keep it in my pocket. And then right before I went to school, I would vomit like over my sweater and then I'll be like, oh, I'm like, I was so dedicated. So, but <laughs> I really did try acting in high school and it was, it was just not good. I changed all the lines on stage. I didn't realize you can't do that during the actual performance. Um, <laughs> it wasn't the best, but thank you. <laughs> You uh, you're you're also known obviously for your style, and I I I've read interviews where you mentioned that you like thrifting. Do you still like thrifting, going to thrift stores, finding uh, fun clothes, or at this point, do people just send you stuff to wear? Oh no, I love it's like I love searching now. I mean, I admittedly search more through like Etsy and more like curated stuff online instead of going to the thrift stores. But I mean, whenever in LA, because I feel like all the good shit is picked out. But back home in the suburbs of Philly, where you can still find like some really hidden gems, I love digging for it. I fucking love it. I love it so much. Demi, I was just reminded of that DMX hoodie you found at Buffalo Exchange. Yes. And, and you know, yes. that, that was such a great moment, a thrift, thrifting moment. Yes. Thank if you, you ever come to New York, I will take you to like all the spots. Buffalo Exchange near East Village? It was, in, the I don't NY, know which. The NYU yeah, campus. 8th Street, 8th Street. Yeah, they're all over. They're all oh, over. But I was just there. Oh my God, we should go mm -hmm. thrifting. Can we please? Is this what, is this sweater thrifted that you're wearing right now? I yes. was going to ask. You. This is, the. is this inside out? It's inside out. It's inside out. Don't, don't look at that. I think <laughs> this is like Urban Outfitters. Literally look at what's cool. Maybe go to thrift stores and just try to like remake some of these things. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's. That's what Brandy Melville does. Apparently, Brandy Melville takes photos of people coming in their stores. No. And then, yes, they apparently they do that. What? Wow. I know. I didn't know. Crazy. <laughs> Katie, we, we like to play a little, a little, little bit of a, a game with you. I love games. Small one, not not really that competitive or anything. But uh, we like to steal segments from other shows, and on Hot Ones, uh, they have the they explain that Graham segment where we, they pull stuff from your Instagram and you explain it. So we're going to do that with you right now. Oh my god! Okay, um, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, Hope, our producer, could you please throw up the first photo? Okay, so Aww, look at <laughs> explain how cute. explain this photo. Uh, I'll set the scene. I'm six years old. I'm on a Disney cruise ship and 
I have a very unfortunate haircut. Um, the mullet's coming back in style, and it I just really want, is. I want to say that I started it first. <laughs> Yes, yes. And the perfect like line across too is just like perfect. Yeah, it was clean. It was really straight. The haircut person really had like a vendetta against me. Like they really didn't like me. I it feel I, I this is like a maybe a, a thing that I, should, I thought of, but I feel like hairstylists and barbers when they cut little kids hair, they really don't care that much. I feel like they're just doing an adequate job to appease the parent. That's really all they're trying to do. Well, the fact yeah. that they didn't even want to please my mom, because why did she let me go out like that? I don't know. And and here's the thing too, Katie, is that you're only what, 20, 21 now. So this, yeah. this was not a picture. This is not a picture from the eighties. This is not a picture from 1991. This is like from probably 2003 or, or no, 2006, well, maybe seven. I mean, I think what's on the Disney cruise, by the way, is that still a thing? That's, yeah. I remember it. Oh my God. I think that that really sets my whole vibe. I've always been vintage. I've always been because so many people have come up to me and they're like, I can't tell if your photos were from like the eight seventies or eighties, but you're, I can't, I don't get it. And I'm just like, you know what? I've always been giving those retro vibes. Yeah. 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 All right. Next photo. <laughs> okay. So Katie, oh, this is your dog, your beloved dog. Oh, um, this was the day I thought I was like the day before I thought I was going to put him down. Oh, really old. No, but there's a happy ending. Um, he ended up so like I made a whole shrine for him. I was so upset. And so then at this point, there's a story here. I, I was dating somebody long distance. So I was like, I'm so upset. And they're like, okay, I'll fly in and comfort you during this time. I'm like, okay, sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. That night, he, my boyfriend at the time flies in. Derp is suddenly miraculously fine. We end up not putting <laughs> him on, he's still alive. And then that weekend, that weekend, we find out my boyfriend was cheating on me. Oh. And I think they knew. I think my dog knew. Because if he didn't fly in, we wouldn't have gotten to the phone to look for those receipts. And yes. Derp was fine. He's still <laughs> fine. He didn't die. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's That was a backstory I was not expecting. I was expecting yeah. just to, Leah. Yeah. Like, wow, no, that, that was a lot in that one photo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, lo I love was that, is that a mouse pad or a blanket or what is it? I guess it's too big for a mouse pad to be. Oh, that's a blanket. Yeah. That's Wait, let's let's go to your love life really pad. quick. Who who are we dating right now? Like now that we're on the topic. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. No one. No one. So that's a question. That's a question that that uh, that Demi can ask. That that you know that we I've love never, to I've ask. Never asked. And is it hard? Do you think feel like it's hard to like date right now because you're just so on your. Or just like boom, 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 career. No, because actually, when I get a boyfriend, my <laughs> work ethic goes to shit, and I'm Dude. just like, I'm like, yeah, babe, like, let's totally like hang out, and like I will avoid all my responsibility. It's kind of bad, so I think this is the universe telling me, stop, <laughs> <laughs> focus. Um, so now I'm single, and now I'm working hard. Let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. No, yeah. no distractions. No distractions. I know. But they're so okay. Fun. So this one, this was a very special one, Katie. Tell us about this one. That was me. Oh, that was me. Right after I got my oh. gold ticket. And that's me like sobbing, obviously. Um oh it makes me a tear now. Uh I just remember. Uh, that was the first time I've ever felt like seen and like I could do something. Um, so it was very emotional. I, was, I didn't expect that again. How aware are, were you of the cameras in that situation or did, did they even matter at that point? Oh, no, they didn't even matter. I Because what usually they want you to do afterwards is like what a lot of people do after they get their golden ticket is they come out of the door and they're like do that thing where they're like, Mm, and then like their family's like bummed out and then they pull it and they go yay I didn't even care I didn't even care I just 
that you can see if you watch the audition. I just march out of the door sobbing. I don't even try and go for mystery. I just sob. I'm holding my hand and I go, I made it. Like, I was, I didn't even care. Like I couldn't even pull like a little like joke. Like, whoa, guess what? No, I was done. And the uh, last one. What is, oh what is that? my God. I don't get the American girl thing. American I do. Girl, American I girl doll thing. I don't get it. So. Please take this one, Demi. Go for it. I love, I love the American girls. They're okay, so both... what's your favorite American girl? Like, which one do you resonate with? Okay, well, like, out of, like, the historical or, like, girl of the year? I'd say there's, like, a there's like the general, like, few, no? Yeah. And then there's, like, the girl of the year. Like, the girl I'm holding is Mia, girl of the year 2008, who was a figure skater. But out of their lineup, my favorite American girl doll is julie or molly <laughs> and and what, what what makes those special yeah wait well julie because of her 70s vibe and she had like the cool clothes and you could get like ivy her best friend and i just loved that whole aesthetic and molly i loved her aesthetic too and also she was the only one i looked like when i was younger because i had glasses and like similar enough hair um so I was a narcissist, so I'm just like, I'm going to pick the one that looks the most like me to be my favorite. Yeah, it was like a little sister. It's like a little sister, I guess. Yeah, and they even have that own, like, line of dolls, like the Just Like Me dolls. Um, I always thought I had brown hair, though. No one ever said I was ginger until American Idol, so... I get that too. See, people call me ginger all the time. And I think it's more of like a dark Auburn or something. I, cause I think of ginger, I think of like Prince Harry, like bright orange yeah. shock and like freckles and stuff. And I don't yeah. have that. But so. apparently, but I look at you and I'm like, yeah, that, like, I think you're ginger. I, I think, think we're like, like the same brand of ginger. Like I want to be ginger. This is not fair. Everyone's ginger. I'm a ginger light. I'm like half. Ginger I actually ass. always wanted I, to try I, I but... ginger. I'm diet ginger. <laughs> diet ginger. <laughs> yeah. All right, Katie, we, we have got to let you go, but thank you so much for joining us on this Real of Jordan and Demi. You're the Congratulations great. on all the new music. Yes. Thank you, guys. I loved being here. I hope to come back soon. What Please. what uh, what do you got coming down the pike? What's the next uh, couple months look like for Katie Turner? Music. So there's Maybe. another single coming out soon? Maybe. that We're in Maybe. the works works figuring out what we want to release and everything but new music definitely maybe i'll have a boyfriend god willing fuck maybe <laughs> but if you have a boyfriend there's not going to be any new music so it's kind of a shit <laughs> okay i'll get this i think out. you can do both i think you can do both but we'll talk about it yeah we'll talk about it um but hopefully new music hopefully a tour and hopefully to see a lot of people in the purse the person the flesh in person Yes, yes. Well, you're a great live performer. And anyone who gets to see Katie Turner when she's coming through town, make sure you get tickets to go see her. Great show. Thank you. And thank you, guys. Have a great day. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye. That was Katie Turner. Her new single, so God sweet. Must Hate Me, is out now. Demi, you, you guys you guys had a thing going. I, 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 that, that was We're fun. going thrifting. We're going yeah. thrifting. We're going all kinds of shopping, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 dish on boys that you can't talk about on a podcast. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, Jordan. Jordan knows everything, as we always say. All right, guys. Well, uh, we have one more show. We will be back next week with the amazing Joss Stone. So until then... You can listen to our past episodes on Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Music, etc. And check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. So until next time, we will see you later.